I'm back with something new I want to add to the channel. I want to do book reviews because in my opinion, the number one way to, well, one of the ways to um, instill a good sense of self in your kids is to be very strategic about what you're giving them for in, in entertainment and the images that you're presenting to them even when you're teaching a big them reading family we're, we're big readers we love going to the library we have regular scheduled times when we go to the library and i noticed that when i go to the library and i'm looking for books a lot of the stories that i see if i'm not careful you know when i want to take out princess stories or ballet stories because these are the things that a lot of times little girls are interested in stories about little girls that dress up and do things that little girls do when i'm looking for stories like that a lot of the images don't really usually represent my daughters um, i sometimes i have to go out of my way to find something that does and if i'm really not thinking about it i don't go and try to look for those type of images and i remember I can't remember which daughter it was that came to me first saying saying things like, oh, you know, I wish my hair could be straight and, and, and hang long like a real princess. And I was horrified. And I remember having a conversation with my husband. I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, I'm doing the nat. My hair is natural. And, you know, they're surrounded by natural people. I don't understand where they're getting this from. And, you know, it, it takes someone practical like like my husband to tell me tell me that well well what videos are they watching you know what cartoons are they watching you know when when you're when you're reading them stories what what do the characters in the stories look like do they look like your daughters or do they look like someone with straight hair because kids are drawn to what they see they they kind of like want to be like what they're around and what I have made it my business to look for books that have images that promote what I'm trying to teach my girls celebrate their natural texture their skin tone and even their culture find stories that you know talk about things that would happen in an African American house books that I want to show you. you this is one of my daughter's favorite stories Oh, it's backwards. I forgot about that. Okay, it's backwards. I will have the names of all these stories in the information box below. This is called Shantae Keys and the New Year's Peas. And my daughter loved this book. I got this book out of the library. And let me see if I could show you one of the images. She loved this book so much that I had to go and buy it so we could own it. And look at this picture. This mom has a teeny weeny afro. Okay. And Shantae has an adorable puff. I love the way they represent her her hair. And it's a it's a nice rhyming story about uh New Year's and and some people's traditions in in, in, in the African American culture of eating black eyed peas for good luck for New Year's and it's really good because they talk about the type of food that you know you we're, we're likely to see on our table and my daughter just loved this it wasn't about hair but the images still spoke to her a positive message about her hair so I know people have heard of this book honey I love and it's by Eloise Greenfield Shantae Keys is by um, Gail Pierness Davenport and this this one is about hair and she basically talks about how she loves her hair and this is another one with great images in it look at this one I love that with her her braids in the front and the big huge fluffy puff in the back I love that And then they have one with all the little girls in the fire hydrant. Come on, y'all. If you grew up in Brooklyn, you knew all about the fire hydrant. Well, actually, this one is a picture of the hose. But there is a scene in here 
Well, they're well, they call they're calling the the holes uh, the flying pool. But for me, when I was a kid growing up in Brooklyn, the flying pool because we weren't going to the we we didn't get to the regular pool that often. The flying pool was a fire hydrant. I know it's illegal, <laughs> but we used to pry open the fire hydrant. And have the water flying everywhere and we would jump in there and have the time of our lives in the hot summer days and it's just a glorious image and she talks about how much she loves her hair and here's somebody with some cornrows some braids and beads on the end love it and um i love my hair i know people you you've, you've probably heard this one this is another popular one by natasha Tarpley. This one is also about hair. Beautiful images in that one also. I love this one because it looks like somebody you know who wears her hair her hair like this. This one, this girl has cornrows with beads on the end. And someone gave me this one. And I really like the images in this book. Um, it's called Cornrows by Camille Yar Yar Yarbro. Forgive me on the pronunciation. I'm not the best. Um, and this one has more of like, you know, an African history feel to it. I can't really remember what the story is about. I haven't read it in a little while. But just looking through, I see some images like this, maybe tribal images, which I think is always good to introduce to our kids because really it's a part of their, their ancestry and history. Um, look at this one, she's like an Afro. You can't see it that well, but love it. Okay, and, and so I like to pepper their story times with stories like this. And I and I have to be very deliberate about it and strategic about it. Because if I just go in there looking for picture books, chances are that I probably will walk out of there without too many like that. It's unfortunate that I have to be deliberate like that. But I want my daughter to have an appreciation for herself. And if she never sees herself, and we spend a lot of time reading books and watching videos and doing things like that, but she never sees herself. Why should she want to, 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 to be the one that stands out and, and is different? And when you're talking about beautiful things, she never sees herself. So this is another book. You know, she loves it so much. The cover has a, a maple syrup dried up on it. But um, it's a book called All The All I, I'll Ever Want Christmas. And I love this book because I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, my mom would do like three big uh, dookie braids in my hair. And over time, they looked a certain way. And these images remind me so much of what my hair would look like. And it's wonderful. And it's a really good um, history lesson, too, because I'm thinking this took place during, was it during, during the Depression? And it kind of talks about, you know, what times were like for, for black people during that time and how they struggled. And, but yet, it's such an upbeat, uplifting story about the things that really matter. Um, and, and the bond between sisters. And I have four girls, so you know... I'm all for anything that talks about sisters. And for history, sure when I get picture books, I don't only like to get fictional picture books. I like to get factual picture books. There are great picture books about historical figures. So I like to go out there and find something other than Martin Luther King, Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, even though those are great stories and our kids should definitely know those stories and I tell them those stories also. But I also try to look for something they don't hear and they don't see all the time. Somebody like something, someone like Satchel Paige, who is a famous baseball uh, uh, uh athlete who contributed a lot to the sport. He was African-American and 
came out in a time when African Americans were not welcome uh, in the major leagues or whatever. I'm not a baseball person, so I'm not even going to front. But this was a good story. And my daughter, who's all things girly, I was really surprised that she was riveted and even asked me to read it to her a couple of times. And so this was a good story. Um, and I love the images. There weren't too many women, female images in this story because it's about Satchel. But I love the images of, you know, just letting them see stories about black people, you know? So for, I really for the book this. reviews, you know, this was sort of one where I, I did a whole lot of stories together. Um, I don't want to do it this way from here on in. I think even some of the stories I did today probably deserved more detail. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a story and I'd like to summer, tell you what the summary is about and talk to you about things I liked about the story, things I didn't like about the story. Uh, uh, maybe, you know, I might share how discussion was spurred by the story because that's one thing that I love to use picture books for. I want to get my girls talking. I want them asking me questions. I want them noticing things so we can talk about it so that I can you know, make sure that what they're getting out of it is what I, I had hoped to present to them and even to learn where they're, where they're at and what they're thinking about things. Um, and so it's a great way to spur conversation and it's a great teaching tool. So I know that I've heard people say that black people just don't read, they don't like to read, that's one of our weaknesses. But you better learn to like to read and read to your daughters and um, show them images according to what you want them to really see themselves as and what you really want them to think about themselves that reinforce what you're trying to instill in them. So, so anyway, that's my hope. Um, I will come and I will do them one by one and, uh, and hopefully it'll give you some ideas about what you could do with your daughters. So let me know below what you think. Be blessed.